Hi, welcome to chapter 20 of the UVM Primer code videos. Uh, my name is Ray Salemi, the author of the UVM Primer. And in this chapter, we're going to talk about class hierarchy and deep operations. This is a actually not a system verilog or a verification specific topic. This is something that you run into uh, whenever you do object-oriented programming. And we're going to look at it because in our next uh, chapter, we're going to be using this idea. Consider that we have a uh, class hierarchy like this. We're back with the lions. So we've got uh, the animal class gives us the gets extended to create the lion class, it gets extended to create the captive lion class, and gets extended to create the circus lion class. And we can see that each of these classes has a uh, has some additional information. So the animal uh, has an age, and the lion has a bit to say whether it's female. And the captive lion has a name, because ones in the wild don't have names. Uh, and a circus lion can do some number of tricks, up to 255 tricks, as a matter of fact. So uh, we look at this hierarchy, and let's say that we have uh, two handles to a lion. Let's just look down here at the module. Uh, we create a lion. Um, uh, we create a, uh, a called Lion 1, we create a Circus Lion 2, and uh, what we want to do is we want to copy Circus Lion 1 into Circus Lion 2. Now, if you just do a copy, if you just say, if you just type, for example, um, something like this, Circus Lion 1 H equal, uh, 2 H equals Circus Lion 1 H, this is not really a copy. What this does is this copies the handle from Circus Lion 1H into Circus Lion 2H. But you don't really have two objects here. You have one object with two variables pointing to it. And you get into the situation where if you make changes to the object using variable Circus Lion 1H, you're also going to see those changes when you access them using Circus Lion 2H. Now, in some cases, we're going to see that we want that behavior. We'll use that behavior to transfer data, say, from a memory read back to the person who requested the read. But in, if we don't want that data, if we want to really copy one object into another object, we need to have a method to do that. Uh, and the method that we have here is called bad copy. So you can imagine that this copy doesn't work. But the idea behind it is that we have Circus Lion 1 gets passed to bad copy, and that means that its data gets copied into Circus Lion 2. So let's go back and look at bad copy and see what's so bad about it. So here's bad copy. And, you know, it doesn't look so bad, right? I mean, we've got int, bit, string, and, and num tricks. I mean, uh, age is female, name, and num tricks right here. And here we are, we copy them. We copy num tricks, name is female, and age. So we've copied this data over. Well, that, that doesn't seem bad right now because it actually would work. We would say we would pass any test that we wrote with this to say we expected that to happen. The problem comes into this notion of having a test bench that gets either more intractable or more flexible over time. In this case, we've created some intractability. Uh, we've created a way to introduce a bug without knowing that we're introducing a bug. Consider if we did this. We have animal, and animal now, let's insert a new class in this hierarchy. It, mammal extends animal and the and the number we want for mammal is babies in litter and then lion extends mammal well if that's what we do if somebody goes and changes the class hierarchy and we're down here with our with our bad copy this copy doesn't handle babies in litter and because it doesn't handle babies in litter that data won't get copied over, and that will introduce some bug somewhere else. And it's going to be a really difficult bug to find because, uh, because you know, it, it, it's hard to uh, figure out where, where this could be going wrong because no one has touched this code. This code will show up as completely untouched, but it doesn't work now. So to solve that problem, we're going to do something called deep copying. Uh, and the way deep copying works is if we go all the way back to the top of our class, and uh, let's... Uh, Let's jump over to this deep copy example. We go all the way up to the top of our class. We create this animal, and he's got age, or it's got age, because it doesn't have a sex right now. It's got age, and um, we have a do copy function. Now, this is a system Verilog. I mean, this is a UVM thing that we call this thing do copy, and we'll see 
in the next example uh, how it fits in with the UVM, but we're not using the UVM here, we're just doing general classwork, but we're still going to call it do copy. And the way it works is you pass me an animal, a copied animal, and I copy the age into my age. So I'm copying the animal in. Okay, so that's fine. But now for mammal, let's consider mammal. Mammal adds this babies in litter thing. And you'll notice that we, uh, when we create mammal, we uh, ask for the age and the number of babies, and we call super.new. So we call the animal constructor to, give, to, pass, to set the age, but then we set the babies ourselves. Um, when we look at do copy, we do something a little different. We notice we have do copy has animal as its as its uh, argument, and that's a polymorphism thing, right? If we're being given a, a mammal to copy, uh, we can certainly put an animal into a mammal a mammal into an animal variable, and so we're being given a mammal, but we call it an animal here. And why do we do that? Well, we create a local uh, variable of type mammal, but then we call super dot do copy and we pass up copied animal. And this is the key to deep copying. When we call the super dot do copy, we're really calling this one, and it's and we're copying the age. Now what we do is we call super dot do copy. We cast the animal to be a mammal. Now that it's a mammal, we can copy babies and litter. So now we have a situation where this class is only worried about the variables that are defined and declared in this class and we don't have to worry about what goes on above us because we've called super dot do copy and passed the uh, and passed the base uh, object up and we see this now as we go down so if we go next to our uh, which guy is this this one is lion so lion we have copied animal again and you notice they all take copied animal as their argument. That way it's consistent all the way up the chain. Uh, we call super dot do copy pass at the animal. And whatever copying up there happens, in this case, babies and litter and age. Um, then we cast this guy to lion. And we copy is female. And this continues now down the chain. So captive lion, we do the same thing. Pass it up, cast it, and copy over the name. And circus lion we do the same thing. We cast, we call super dot do copy to copy everything above us in the hierarchy, cast it, and we copy the number of tricks. And that is, uh, that is copying being done in a deep way. But we've been kind of uh, skipping over the fact that we're doing the same thing all along with convert to string. So we have this function called convert to string. It takes the data in our uh, object and create, turns it into a string so we can print it to the screen. And you'll notice that we're calling, um, we're returning the concatenation of super dot convert to string, which takes care of all of the data above us and returns a string. And we're concatenating onto that um, a, uh, a carriage return and then our data, number of tricks. So that the convert to string, if we go all the way back to the top and look down, the, uh, down, the, down here, we'll see we start out with putting the age. And then this guy called super duck convert to string for mammal adds babies and litter, and then lion adds uh, gender, and then uh, captive lion adds name, and circus lion adds number of tricks. And so when we make, call these, they will work regardless of what happens in the hierarchy. And that is deep operations, and we're going to use that in the next chapter.